Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. Come on children, let's go to our lesson for today. So it will be a lesson in standard 10th. The subject is English and the name of the lesson is the concert. Now it is lesson number 3.6 from your English textbooks. Now children, when you look at this uh, subject or when you look at the name of this lesson, the word concert has got something to do with music it has got something to do with performance okay now in this lesson also we are going to see or we are going to witness and talk about a concert which happened but before we go to this lesson and before we try to see what was the concert or what was the story behind the concert in this lesson let us uh, try and understand and see what a concert is so when you look at this image you will see musical instruments and you will also see some people sitting and performing along with these musical instruments so the word a concert in fact children means a musical performance which is given in public all right so in public means there could be a large hall there could be a big stage on which people could be performing and there would be a huge crowd present to witness this performance so it could look something like this all right see here there is a huge lit up stage and an open space and you can see lots and lots of people present there for the concert and also they are cheering up for the musicians who are playing there so a concert is a musical performance that we have come to know and it is a performance which is given in public in the middle of huge crowds now this is a concert which is happening in a hall now children I told you that in this particular lesson also lesson number 3.6 we are going to be witnessing a story about a concert but the concert in this particular lesson is not the kind of concert that we are seeing here on the screen so it is of course going to be a musical performance but it is not going to be a public performance so then what was this concert about and why were the musicians who were involved not performing in public okay so that is how we will understand when we uh, see the story now children you could always keep your uh, textbooks open and this lesson is on page number 137 of your English textbook and like we always do for these uh, story lessons we uh, do not read the entire story from the textbook but I try to make use of pictures in order to show you the gist of the story so once we see the story towards the end I might ask you what the feelings associated with the story are or what are the human emotions which are linked with the story okay so now this story is about a small family but before that let's see the author or let us look at the person who's written the story so her name is Shanta Rao okay and now who is this Shanta Rao let us get some more information about Shanta Rao so Shanta Rao was a notable uh, dancer from India see she's written a, a story on uh, music in this particular case she has also uh, written a lot of uh, dance uh, dramas and she has written uh, she has given a lot of music and she has been a very very you can say uh, involved and active person in the field of music and drama and dance okay and she was also an exponent of uh, Bharatanatyam which is a dance form from India and she has studied Kathakali and she has studied Kuchipudi so I will show you pictures of all these because now we are in an age where we are somehow forgetting our traditions okay so Bharatanatyam, Kathakali, Kuchipudi all these are uh, traditional Indian dance forms so I will show you some pictures of that also before we move on 
Now let us talk a little bit more about uh, Shanta Rao, our writer for today's uh, story. So she was a recipient of the Padma Shri Award and also the Sangeet Natak Academy Award and also the Kalidas Sanman. So she was a very celebrated and decorated person in the field of art, music, drama, etc. Now this story which she has written is a true story. And you will see the names of very famous musicians like Pandit Ravi Shankar and Ustad Allah Rakha Khan etc. Now these people are the real part of the story. So in this story actually Pandit Ravi Shankar and Pandit uh, and Ustad Allah Rakha Khan were part of the story. Only the other names have been changed a bit. So you can say that this is a true story. It is not a fiction. It was based on someone's life. So now who are these people? around whom these stories uh, happened or the story evolved. But before that, like I promised you, let me show you pictures of some uh, famous Indian dance forms. So this is uh, Bharatanatyam. Now this is the art form uh, which was, you know, practiced by Shanta Rao. Okay. And uh, this, is a, uh, this is a dance form from Tamil Nadu, which is a South Indian state. Now there is also mention of this particular dance form called as Kathakali. Now Kathakali is again a dance form from uh, Kerala. Okay, it is again a South Indian state. Now Katha here means a story and Kali means a dance. So in a way it is a kind of a dance which will tell you a story. So Kathakali. And then you have Kuchipudi. Now Kuchipudi is also a major Indian classical dance form and it originated in the small village called Kuchipudi in Andhra Pradesh and therefore the dance form also is called as Kuchipudi. Okay, so this was about uh, Shanta Rao and this was about the various uh, dances that she performed. Alright, and it also gave us a little bit of insight into how famous our Indian culture is. Okay, having said that, let us now move to our story for today. So here we have a family of uh, four people, the father, mother and the siblings. Now the sister is Smita and her brother is Anant. Now this story is a little bit of a sad uh, story children because Anant here is suffering from a life threatening disease. Okay, now they are just one year apart, Anant and Smita. They are, Smita is elder, she is 16 and Anant, here you can see him on the screen, he is 15 years old. And as you can see, Anant is not in a very good state of health. In fact, they have come to this uh, city that is uh, Bombay. In the textbook you will see, it, you will read it as Bombay because Bombay is the old name of the state, Mumbai. So Mumbai started being called as Mumbai in the year 1995. Till then, Bombay was the name of Mumbai. Okay, so this child, Anand, he is really very sick and his parents have brought him to Mumbai for treatment. And he is suffering from uh, cancer and as you know that cancer can prove to be fatal sometimes. It could kill people and the doctors have actually given up on this poor child Anant and the doctors have told his parents that you please uh, take him home and indulge him. Indulge him means you see to it that you fulfill all his wishes because uh, unfortunately or very sadly he might not live long. So this is the circumstance around which the story revolves. So I told you it is not a happy situation. It is a rather sad situation where there is a small family, just one, just two, one brother and one sister and the poor brother is now suffering from such a disease which might not let him live long. So in this case now everyone tries to see that uh, he, all his wishes are fulfilled and he is always very happy etc. There is another part to the story also children, these two children Anant and Smita, they are very very interested in music okay and they have been learning to play the sitar also before Anant fell sick both of them that is Anant and Smita they were learning to play the sitar and it was their passion to play the sitar especially Anant. 
Anant was very passionate about playing the sitar. Smita also loved playing the sitar, but Anant was like it was his passion to play the sitar. But uh, unfortunately, he was uh, dying of cancer, and there was this passion of his which was going to be unfulfilled. And now he was uh, in a condition where he could not even get up and move around too much. He had become kind of immobile. He had become very weak. and he needed uh, assistance to get up to walk and also to breathe you can say okay so this is the condition of poor anand when one day suddenly smita reads in the newspaper that a very famous uh, sitar uh, player or we can also call him as a sitar maestro now who is a maestro a maestro is a person who is a uh, very prominent okay or who is an expert so pandit ravi shankar he was a sitar maestro and he was coming to play in that particular city all right so it was very uh, exciting and smita happened to just blurt it out when she read in the newspaper she got so excited that without realizing that her poor brother for whom sitar is a passion may not be able to attend this concert so when she said it her mother warned her that her brother might feel bad after listening to this news but her brother actually heard her he was awake and he heard her and he was feeling bad but then he was also excited that pandit ravi shankar who was an expert at playing the guitar a uh, sitar sorry is going to come and perform in this city but he also knew that because of his illness because of his sickness he will not be able to go and be part of the concert okay because he was really really very very sick so this is how the concert the you know the idea of concert now why the idea of concert came in because pandit ravi shankar was supposed to play he was going to conduct a concert in the city so smita decided that she will attend the concert and she booked two tickets and she thought that now she and her father they will go and they will attend the concert okay unfortunately her brother anant in spite of all the you can say excitement and in spite of all the uh, passion that he had for the instrument he could not go but he asked his sister to enjoy the concert and he also commented that she is very lucky because she is able to do something which she love to do okay so you see children sometimes we are normal and we do not we are disease free we can do things that we want to do but you think of a people who are not as lucky as we are and then you will realize that we have no reasons to complain for all the little things that we grumble about there are so many little things in life which we take for granted isn't it now during this lockdown we have realized that how important our freedom is how important and how valuable it is that we can go anywhere that we want we can meet people we can hug people we can uh, play with our friends isn't it so during the lockdown period we must have re- you must have all realized how valuable the small things in life was so now anant is also on his deathbed and he is says he feels that he is going to miss the chis chance in his lifetime the chance of listening to the sitar maestro now smita with a heavy heart she is happy of course that she is able to attend the concert but at the same time she is very very sad for her brother who is also extremely interested in this and she starts listening to the music as she starts listening to the music and she gets engrossed in the music there a plan starts taking birth in her mind okay and she feels that yes i will put this plan into action and i will try and fulfill the wishes of my dying brother so what does she do so she goes to this hall this is shanmukananda hall in mumbai she attends the concert and she listens to the music and she is enchanted 
by the music which is being played on stage but as soon as the concert is over she goes backstage and she meets after a lot of difficulty after a lot of requesting with the people who are in security she manages to go and meet these two very famous very talented players that is one is pandit ravi shankar on the sitar and the other one is ustad allah rakha who always used to accompany and play with pandit ravi shankar when he used to play the sitar ustad allah rakha used to play the tabla so with great difficulty she wormed her way or through the on to the stage and she crossed the lines of security and she came face to face with these two people that is pandit ravi shankar and ustad allah rakha and she requested them she told them the entire story of her brother anant and she requested them and she asked them can you please play for my sick brother now it is very obvious that her brother will not be able to come and attend the concert so what was the only thing that the uh, the the masters could do they could go home and play the instruments for smita's a brother anant privately so if they play privately then it is not a concert because a concert is a musical performance which is done in front of a large crowd okay anyways these two music maestros they were such great musicians and they were so much in demand and probably people used to pay them a heavy sum for playing uh, taking part in concerts but they were of such a kind heart they were such kind hearted human beings that instantly they agreed to visit smita's home and play for the dying child anant so you can see what happened the very next day you could see ustad allah rakha and pandit uh, ravi shankar getting out of a taxi in front of smita's house and then they entered the house and when you can imagine the kind of excitement anant would have felt okay anant was like he was breathing his last and he was uh, awake and he was aware that these two great uh, performers had come and perform and they're going to perform just for him okay so these two people they came and they performed for him and as they were performing the boy had a smile on his face if you can see this particular image the boy had a smile on his face and these two artists also they performed with a lot of joy with a lot of happiness for the small boy who was unfortunately not anywhere near old age and who was not you know supposed to die at such young age but it was really sad it was very unlucky okay but they tried to put in some joy and some happiness into the last moments of this child's life and as they were playing very very gently you will see that life moved out or left anant's body so here children i told you when we started discussing the lesson that there are some points which i will want you to think about when you have listened to the story now and you can also pause the video and you can read the story from your textbook now after you have read the story let us think about what are the main things or what are the main human emotions that have come across in this lesson so one is the sister's love for her brother okay now she wanted to somehow fulfill his last wishes because she knew that he is not going to be there with her for a long time now okay she also knew that these great musical you can say gurus they would not agree very easily to come and play for her brother because they were celebrities and you know these celebrities sometimes they act very pricey they do not talk to common people but the sisters love she it forced her to go and approach these people and pray and request them that they come and play for her brother at the same time you also have to look at the greatness and you have to look at the qualities of a love compassion and empathy 
that were there with these great artists they used to be paid thousands of rupees to just play in front of the public okay and their time was also very very precious but see you can see these two great people they performed just for the satisfaction of a small boy who was dying so that is their greatness so the story reflects the love of a sister for her brother and also the greatness of such artists okay children so this was the story of the concert and like we discussed in the beginning this concert is not like the any regular concert that you see or you have heard about if you check up the meaning of concert in the dictionary you will see that it is a, a performance which is done musical performance which is done in public amidst a large large crowd but here we saw how it was very very different okay so like we always do after we understand the story of the lesson we proceed and we try to look at a few exercises from grammar and vocabulary which are there in the textbook so let us look at this exercise in grammar where we are supposed to choose an appropriate adverb or adjective and we have to fill it into the blanks so that the sentence becomes meaningful so now for such exercises children i would always advise you that you should pause the video and you should try to figure out the answers yourself okay do not look at the video completely in the beginning and try and write the answers ready made try to do some work yourself also so try to pause the video and find out the answers and then once you have done it what you can do is you can come back and check with my answers and see whether your answers are right okay so come on let's uh, check out what the answers to these questions are so she spoke in an visit excited tone or excitedly tone so it is excited tone okay so here you're using the adjective excited here is the adjective smita accepted the suggestion dash so is it grateful or is it gratefully so the answer is gratefully why because we are talking about acceptance which is a verb so gracefully talks more about the verb accepted so it is an adverb in the previous case the tone was excited okay so we are describing the tone that is why it is an adjective point number 3 they gave him whatever made him happy or happily so here the answer is happy which is an adjective because the word happy is describing him okay so it is an adjective he ran very fast now it is an adverb why because we are talking about the manner in which he ran he would become a dash sitarist some day he would become a great sitarist some day so sitarist is being described by the word great or he we are talking about him okay so it is an adjective life went out of him gently how did life go out of him gently so it is an adverb okay now we have this particular exercise 9b about direct and indirect speech so you are supposed to rewrite all these sentences in indirect speech so we will do one thing let us first see quickly let's do a small kind of study about what is the meaning of direct speech and what is the meaning of indirect speech and then we will come and try to solve these exercises so let us see what is a direct and indirect speech so direct speech gives us the exact words said by a person it is used when you want to quote the same words the speaker used so if you want to quote someone i do not want to change even one word that has been said i will use direct speech look at the examples can you come to the library with me said susan pay attention there are inverted commas here okay 
Example number two, keep quiet, shouted the teacher. No, I don't have a spare key, said mother. So all these are examples of direct speech. Let's see what is indirect speech, children. We have already done this, uh, these uh, direct speech, indirect speech, etc. in the lower classes. So we are just revising the points before we try to solve the questions given in this lesson. Indirect speech is also called as reported speech. Reported. When you are when you're trying to say what someone else said, you are reporting. Okay, so it is called as reported speech. It is used to communicate what someone else said but without using the exact words. But remember, you are not going to change what that person said. Okay, the meaning will be the same. You might just change the words. So, let us look at some examples. Someone says something to you and later you want to tell someone else what was said. So, when do you use indirect speech? Someone says something to you and you want to tell someone else what was said. Hence, on such occasions, you can use indirect speech. See, he said that he was going to come. So, if it was in direct speech, how they would have written it? He said, inverted commas, I am going to come. See here, the person's exact words were, I am going to come. But when you have said this later, you will say, he said that he was going to come. So, if you look at this image carefully, you will see that there are certain very obvious uh, changes which have been made. The inverted commas have gone, the tense has changed, in direct speech it is I am going to come, in indirect speech it is he was going to come, okay. The pronoun has also changed, I has become he. So there are certain rules which are associated with direct and indirect speech. We will look at them also quickly. Before that, let us look at some more examples. See, direct speeches. She said, I can swim. In direct speech, she said, she could swim. You could also say, she said that she could swim. She said, I must go. So, this can, see here, can has changed to could. And the inverted commas have gone. Okay, next example. She said, I must go. She said she had to go. Okay. She said, comma, inverted commas, I may drive there. She said she might drive there. So you should see here how the may has become might. She said, comma, inverted commas, shall we start? Question mark and inverted comma close. See the answer? She said, if she asked if we should start because it's a question. So see, instead of saying said, we are saying asked. So this is how the small, small changes are happening. When it was a statement, we said said, said, said. When it is a question, we are saying she asked. She said, I'll call you. She said she would call me. So I will has become would. I has become she. So if you sit and you read these statements properly once again, paying attention to the all the small, small changes that have been done when you change direct speech to indirect speech, you will get an idea of the rules also. So see, when you write indirect speech I in reported speech, it becomes he or she because you are reporting, you are talking about someone else, isn't it? V becomes they, U becomes he, she, they, my becomes his or her, our becomes their, your becomes his, her, their and so on. So I want you to pause the video here and look at these statements and try to understand them. There is no point in by hearting this or memorizing this because that is not going to help. Let us look at some rules now. So, there are certain rules regarding place and time and there are certain rules regarding tense. When you looked at all the examples, when you read the, the examples, you must have realized that there are certain changes in the place in the time 
and there are certain changes which have been made in the tense also okay and of course there are then changes which have been made in the pronouns which are used so as far as place and time is concerned today will become that day now will become then yesterday will become the day before days ago will become days before last week will become the week before next year will become the following year tomorrow will become the next day or the following day here will become there this will become that these will become those ago will become either previously or before tonight will become that night again there is no point in memorizing this you can read it okay once twice remember children in english grammar if you understand you will be able to answer if you wrote memorize if you by heart it is going to be of no use okay so try to read it so that you understand it as far as tense is concerned i cannot take all the examples there are these are some if there is will in the direct speech sentence in the reported speech it will be would can will be could must will be had to have to will be had to may might become might should could remain should and ought to also could remain ought to there are many many more examples as you come across sentences you will be able to see the differences in how the changes are made so these are some rules we cannot look at all the rules here children these are some rules as far as how you change direct speech into reported speech or indirect speech and vice versa sometimes they might give you statements in reported speech or indirect speech you will have to change it into direct speech also okay now let's come back and look at the sentences in our textbook here in this particular case in these questions they have given you the sentences in direct speech and you are supposed to change it to indirect speech all right so here let me halt or pause the video for a moment and you can try and find out the answers and then i will show you the answers okay so see the first one please she begged please come so this is smita talking to the music maestros how will you write it into indirect speech so i am standing there when smita is uh, talking to these maestros and i have heard that smita is telling them please she begged him please come how will i go and tell it to the third person how will i say what smita told the music maestros i will say she begged him to please go see come has become go all right second one he said what shall we do ustad sahib so this is a question so remember if it is a question said will become asked so he asked ustad sahib what they should do shall has become should here we has become they so he said what shall we do ustad sahib has become he asked ustad ustad sahib what they should do her brother said enjoy yourself he added lucky you so how will you change it into indirect speech her brother asked her to enjoy yourself commenting on how lucky she was you can also say her brother asked her to enjoy yourself adding how lucky she was okay whichever way you want to write yes the next one yes pandit ji replied it is settled then tomorrow morning we shall perform for the boy so here pandit ji is telling ustad sahib okay so they are agreeing they have agreed they have talked to each other and pandit ji has said yes he has agreed and he has decided that the next day morning 
and it is settled also that the next day morning they will perform for the boy who is dying, Anand. So Pandit ji replied in the affirmative. See, see Pandit ji said yes. So that means Pandit ji replied in the affirmative and stated that it was settled then. It is settled has become it was settled. And see tomorrow morning has become next morning. That they would perform for the boy next morning. So Pandit ji replied in the affirmative. And stated that it was settled then that they would perform for the boy the next morning. Okay children. So this is how we have you can say changed or rewritten all the statements in direct speech into, into the indirect form. So children in this particular lesson we talked about the story between a brother and a sister where the brother was on his death bed and he, he had very few days to live but it was his uh, wish you can say that he wanted to attend the concert which was happening and it was of course impossible for him to physically move from his place and go and sit in the hall and, ex and uh, experience it or witness the con uh, concert so his sister did all that is possible with her, within her capacity and she in fact you can say tried to uh, tell or convey her feelings to the two uh, musical stalwarts here in this particular lesson and she somehow convinced them to come and play for her brother. Now it was not her achievement alone remember it was also the large heartedness of the two musicians. Okay, We also saw the vocabulary part or the grammar part which is there in this particular lesson. So that is all for today. So children, now you have watched the video. So after you watch the video now, you will have to complete a few simple tasks. Now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones. Now after you watch the video, what will you do? You will please go to the description box which is given below the video so what is the description box see the description box looks like this all right and after you go to the description box you will see that there are a few questions there now what are these questions about these questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched so what will you do? You will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want. Okay. After that, we have another task waiting. You will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the Google form. So now what is the Google form children? It is nothing but a simple form. There are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself. So these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video. So children. Wasn't that a very interesting lesson? I'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which I keep posting regularly.